Hi, I'm Jennifer Roy Francoli, the mind body violinist. And I'm also the host of a free practice group in um, Facebook. And I invite you to join. It's called the Mind Body Practice Tribe. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a place where we get together and explore music making with the ideas from Alexander Technique. So today's topic for this video is how to make magic happen in your practicing with the Alexander Technique. And so today what I'm going to, here's an outline for today's practice video uh, or teaching video, Facebook Live, whatever we call it here. <laughs> so first I'm just going to give a little introduction about the Alexander Technique because I know many of you are new to my page and my group. By the way, I would love for you to join the group as soon as you can, and I have put a link at the top of this post. So whenever you're ready, just dive in and join my group, and there's a free checklist and guide and all kinds of fun stuff that we're doing. We're just starting a practice challenge today, actually, which is for December, and um, people are just going to be posting their daily goals and um, some practice videos if they feel like it, if you dare. <laughs> we're a very kind, warm, open-hearted community and we're all about supporting you in your practicing. So don't, you don't feel have to feel like you have to post your videos. I know that's very scary for a lot of people. You don't ever have to do that. But a lot of people get tremendous benefit from exposing just little bits of their practicing so that they can get some feedback and start overcoming their performance anxiety if they have any. Um, that's one of my specialties is to help musicians um, and especially violinists with performance anxiety in addition to um, helping people get rid of physical discomfort with the instrument and excess tension that's blocking expression. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Alexander Technique and then just briefly about my story and how it has dramatically changed and improved my life as well as my violin playing. Um, and then I'm just going to dive into three steps, three very, very easy, simple steps that I've put together for you to help bring more magic into your practicing and into your performance. Uh, using the Alexander Technique, of course, because I'm a certified Alexander Technique teacher and this is what I live and breathe all day long every day. <laughs> so let's just dive in. And um, actually, before I do that, um, people keep telling me that I should be practicing in my videos, playing in my videos more. <laughs> so um, I has so many other things on my plate that I didn't even want to think about that and I thought, well, next week I'll do that. <laughs> but true to practicing what I preach, I want to be ready for anything and I do believe that that is going to be helpful for more people if they actually see me play. So <laughs> I thought I would just play for maybe one minute maximum. <laughs> because I really don't want to take a lot of time with that. And actually, if you do want to hear me play and teach with the violin, I've got a lot of YouTube videos. You can just look up my name and they ought to pop up. And especially in my Facebook group that I mentioned, the Mind Body Practice Tribe, I'm also going to be posting my own practice videos, maybe not every day, but I should, Jennifer, you should do it every day. <laughs> I'm free to do it every day if I want to or not, <laughs> like everyone else. Um, but yeah, you'll probably get more chances to hear me play and sometimes even live in my Facebook group. So join my Facebook group. And again, the link is at the top of this post. So, okay. And by the way, I just want to say hello to everybody who's coming on. All my friends are here. So hi, Linda and Kay and Jill. Good morning. And Jenny Quick, good afternoon. Nan, Linda, Dan Wingham, hello, welcome. Um, when I'm doing a Facebook Live, I get your comments scrolling, so I hope to catch all of them. Sometimes I may miss some here or there, but please, I really want this to be as interactive as possible. It's a little weird, I'm still getting used to Facebook Live, but it's a little strange, so it's a little strange for me because I can look at there and I know you're looking at me, but I can't see you. <laughs> so it's a little funny, but I can interact with you. So you can help me out by giving me comments um, that, and if you have any questions, 
Um, if I can't address the specific question right now, after I'm done videoing, I will absolutely look at everybody's questions and I'll probably address them in the practice group later, if not in these comments. Things in the end end up getting lost if there are a lot of comments, so I don't really want to answer or, or do too much in the comments when I'm done, but if there are things that could help my whole community, I will definitely address your questions in the group. So send them here. I will see them. <laughs> okay. And just, I love the hearts and the thumbs up and those things that are coming my way. Those also give me a lot of support so that I get some feedback while I'm doing this. It, I mean, we're most of us performer, performers here. And so you know what it's like to feel the energy of the audience. And so this is what I'm doing. This is a performance. It's also practice and fun. <laughs> and just, <laughs> I mean, performing is fun too, but you get my point. This is an exchange and I'm just being myself here right now. And so I love seeing your hearts and stuff. Besides it boosts my ratings for Facebook live. Their algorithm loves when there's a lot of interaction. So uh, let's just keep those coming. I love it. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to just play a little bit and practice what I preach and show you how I'm applying my Alexander Technique ideas and principles to what I do, which is play the violin. But even if you're not a violinist, it doesn't matter what your activity is. You're, um, you can apply these principles. Okay, so the first thing I want to do to take is to take care of myself. And um, these Facebook Live videos, I'm not used to them, like I said, and they stress me out. <laughs> So I like doing that and I'm getting better at it, but it's still a little nerve wracking. So I notice a little bit of um, nervous tension happening. Um, so I'm, no I'm asking myself, what do I notice about myself? And hi, Sabra. I notice that my neck is a little bit tight in the back, uh, but noticing that helped me breathe a little bit and noticing now I'm starting to notice ease because I've turned my attention inward as opposed to so much going out to all of you. I'm including you and I'm letting what I see come to me. That helps to calm me down. You can probably notice that my speaking has changed very significantly <laughs> as soon as I stop and start paying attention to what I'm noticing. Okay, so notice that there was no, really no self-criticism or judgment going on. I was feeling stressed, but that's life. We all feel stressed sometimes. And this is new to me, so it's also normal that I would feel a little anxious. Facebook Live is not exactly something we as animals were prepared to deal with. <laughs> so some part of my brain is going, danger! So, but when I pay attention and bring myself back to noticing ease in myself, things start to calm down. I realize that I'm not out in the wild and I am safe <laughs> here in my living room. And I actually love doing this because I know that I have friends out there watching and sharing in my experience. And I do love, 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 love teaching what I do so I'm really in my element right now and what could make me happier? I love it. So this is how I'm working with myself and it's going to be a heck of a lot easier for me to play now that I've stopped and noticed a bit of ease. Okay. So I thought I would play one phrase of Bach several times so that, yeah, just as an introduction, but also as a little demonstration of something we all know, is that you can play the same phrase a million different ways. It's never the same way twice. Thank God. <laughs> We'd be bored to death if every performance of Bach were the same. So, um, this is uh, Gig from one of the, this is from the D minor solo partita for violin just the opening, okay? Several times. We'll see what happens. So, again, I'm bringing my attention back to myself and I'm noticing ease right now in my back. 
I'm remembering one of my three magic phrases. Those of you who know me know they are, I am free, I don't have to do anything, and I have time, so I'm not rushing. Notice it's taking me a long time to get to playing. <laughs> I hope you have patience. <laughs> so I have time and I'm noticing ease again. And my breath, and that helps. And step one that I'm going to be addressing today is curiosity. So I'm practicing step one right now, getting really curious about what's gonna come out because I have no idea. I'm just going to watch and observe and see what happens. And I'm noticing ease and ease. to do it with all my performance anxiety and tight and try to control it the way I would have if I didn't know anything about Alexander Technique, okay? Which is pretty much impossible because I can't get rid of my Alexander training. However, it is totally possible to play with tension, so here goes. doubt monster, self-judger, and I'm going to say hello and goodbye because I want to notice ease instead. That was very unpleasant for me. I did not enjoy doing that, although it was kind of funny. It was an experiment. Okay, so back to what I really care about is paying attention to ease and noticing the ease in my right arm and in my neck. Curious about my surroundings and what I notice inside, coming back inward, noticing ease. I'm asking, how is ease my neck? Just wondering. Ah, I got tight as soon as I lifted my violin a bit. That's interesting. Okay, noticing ease. And the back. Wondering about ease. How is ease my neck? Ah, the doubt monsters are coming. <laughs> so I renew my intention. How is ease my neck? How is ease my neck? to talk a little bit about the big picture of what I just demonstrated, okay? To put it in a context. Thank you for those hearts. <laughs> okay, so what is the Alexander Technique? Okay, the Alexander Technique is something very, very, very simple. It's a mind-body tool that helps you do whatever you want to do with more ease, okay? 
So I like applying the Alexander technique to my violin playing, to my teaching. I am trying to get better at applying it to my computer use. <laughs> Um, but pretty much any aspect of life that involves living and moving and breathing and um, doing something in activity can be enhanced and improved and, and made easier. Um, it's really magical how the Alexander Technique can help improve your life. It's improved my relationships. It has helped me become more confident and secure in myself. I notice negative thinking because I'm human, but as you noticed, I say hello to the doubt monsters and do my constructive thinking, which is what we learn in Alexander Technique. It just takes a split second and I'm back on track. Okay, so Alexander Technique is traditionally taught with the hands between a teacher and the student. So the teacher is very gently placing a hand on someone's body in order to give some extra support and information as to how we coordinate ourselves naturally. Um, but it is perfectly possible, as I've discovered over the years, to teach Alexander Technique without the use of the hands. And I'm really, really excited about that because, I mean, it's a no-brainer for me. Alexander himself was an actor and he did not have a teacher. He didn't have a teacher putting hands on him and yet he discovered how he could use his thinking to improve his coordination and um, basically what he wanted to do was to become a better performer and be able to speak with good projection, tone, um, expression, and everything an actor does. Alexander Technique has developed into something that helps anybody, but it's still best known by performers and uh, because Alexander was a performer in the arts himself. And um, so I am fascinated with what Alexander did himself with mirrors and self-observation and experimentation so that he could cure his performance issue for himself. That is what I'm interested in teaching you. I want to help musicians of all kinds, violinists, but um, anybody. I've had so many pianists and singers and all kinds of students at the Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, where I've been teaching for years, and um, pretty much anybody. I've taught every, everyone from a plumber to a journalist to nurses to surgeons. I did a, a study at Cincinnati Children's Hospital with surgeons and taught them how to use their mind-body selves so that they could do laparoscopic surgery with more ease. That was really fun. <laughs> that was exciting. That actually won I mean, that, that's one of the biggest jokes of my life, <laughs> that I'm a published medical researcher. <laughs> I mean, you can give me laugh signs for that, okay? <laughs> that is just hysterical to me, but it was real research. We even won a prize for our paper, and we were, we were presented at the American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics, <laughs> and also at the, we were published in the Journal of Urology, which is the biggest international journal for urology in the world. So <laughs> I just had to tell you that because it's, I find it really funny, um, but I have worked with surgeons and musicians and everybody. This stuff works, okay? So um, I'm not gonna talk more about what the Alexander Technique is. I just demonstrated it for you and now I want you to experience it for yourself, okay? Uh, oh, I said I would tell you a bit about my story. Well, I just told you a little bit about it. But um, let me give you a very, very brief timeline of me as a musician and Alexander Technique teacher, and then we'll get into those three steps I promised I would share with you. Okay, so let's see. Uh, my mom says I needed a violin when I was two. They are musicians, and I used to listen to them playing chamber music for fun with their friends at night as I was a baby. So I've had music in my life um, from before the time I was born. <clears throat> it's in my blood. Oh, it did. I just saw Jill. <laughs> no problem. I didn't even see it. <laughs> um, so I've had, yeah, I was just saying I have music in my blood. So I started playing the violin when I was four and my parents found out about the Suzuki method. And I have, thank God, very loving, supportive, wonderful parents who, because they're musicians, they kind of knew what they needed to do to support and guide me. And so they brought me to some of the best teachers in the world, including Suzuki in Japan. I studied with him for a little while. 
and I studied with Nathan Milstein, who um, was one of the greatest violinists of all time in Switzerland for five summers. Um, what else? Gingold at Indiana University. Basically, I did everything that I needed to do to have a big international solo career, and that was my single-minded focus. That's all I cared about. <laughs> and so I did what it takes, and I got really good. And I did competitions, and I won them, and I performed as soloist with orchestras internationally, and I played at Carnegie Hall multiple times. So I've done a lot, and um, that was mostly... Um, I did a lot of it when I was a teenager, and then everything kind of shifted completely when I decided that I wanted to change direction, and um, pretty, this is very personal, but I decided to live a more contemplative, inward-focused life. I was introduced to spiritual ideas of all kinds, and... Then I met my husband, actually that sort of happened together. Um, my, this is my ex-husband now, as of last year. <laughs> but I met him and we, we've been married, we were married for 26 years. That's why it's hard for me to use the right words, um, calling him ex-husband. But um, yeah, so I switched gears and then I left my ambitions to have a solo career and went into playing for orchestras and freelancing. I did some studio work, um, teaching, violin, all kinds of stuff. But I became less and less happy. That's when I found the Alexander Technique. Um, and I found it because I had neck pain that was not being helped by chiropractic care or regular physician care. So I just, I was so lucky. I feel so blessed that I finally I tried several Alexander teachers um, over the years, but finally, when I really needed one to help me, I found my you know, perfect teacher at the time, Eric Bendix. He's actually the dad, I think I mentioned this in the other, in one of my other lives, but his, his son is Noah Bendix Balgley, who's the concertmaster of the Berlin Philharmonic right now. Um, so anyway, I had a very good Alexander teacher and that changed my life dramatically. And it's, it just helped me bring my body into the picture because I had all these lofty ideas and I was meditating. Um, you know, it was, <laughs> I had a wonderful life and um, everything was perfect, but I was not embodying it with my physical body. So Alexander Technique was like the missing link for me, which started to bring together and integrate all aspects of me, my mind, my thoughts, my body, my feelings, emotions, my music that came later, but it started at the very beginning with Eric and my soul and spirit and all those things over the years with practice have started to become more obviously one thing for me. And that's why I don't actually ever intend to talk about that part because it's very personal, but it's part of me and it just is coming out. So there we go. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> That's the whole point. Um, okay, so I digress. Um, basically, I got neck pain. Alexander Technique cured it within just a couple lessons, and I got so fascinated by the technique that I wanted to train to become a teacher. That takes three years, so I did that, and um, I started practicing seriously again this year, believe it or not. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because of the magic of the Alexander Technique for Music Making, the topic of today's video. It's magical, and I feel like I'm a living, breathing proof of its magic, and it makes me almost tear up, because <laughs> I feel like when I was 19, I stopped practicing, and I stopped caring about music, and I stopped caring about what I had wanted from, from the time I was born, which was to express all of who I am through music with people, to people, to communicate, to share, to connect and perform. I'm a performer. I was born that way. <laughs> so it was perfect that I took that long period of 25 years, whatever it was, it was really less, um, but it was a long period of time where I did not share what I was doing with the world. It was like a recluse. <laughs> Um, but I suffered a lot from it. It was perfect. I needed to go through that, but I suffered a lot. And Alexander Technique helped me realize that I needed to 
can hear, and my voice is breaking up, this is very meaningful for me. Um, Alexander Technique re really made me feel that I needed to come out and express myself again um, through not just my music, but through my words, my speaking, through meeting people, connecting with people, and basically just um, sharing the goodness that we all have inside of us from our depths, out our mind-body instrument, and then for me, out the violin. So Alexander Technique is used in many different ways. Sometimes people use it just for pain relief and then they're done with it. Um, and that's fine, that's great, it works. There's, I think, nothing better. Um, I care deeply about the whole thing. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm here to help musicians get in touch with their hearts and be able to share what you have inside through your body with ease, free of physical discomfort and pain. Who needs that? Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of physical discomfort and tension and let's not have the doubt monster sabotage the good that we're wanting to share with the world, okay? Let's learn tools to say hello to the doubt monsters and then say goodbye so that we can let go of the tension and performance anxiety and not let it control us. Let's find mind, body, self control in the best way possible with consciousness and clear intention. And let's do it. And it's easy. It's really, 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 really easy. I promise. <laughs> Over the years, I've been practicing Alexander Technique since 2003, seriously. And I find as the years pass that it gets simpler and simpler and easier and easier. So I'm all about simplicity and ease. And I swear, <laughs> I can teach you the, okay, I don't want to say that. No, okay. I need to express it. I have taught and I can teach you the principles of the Alexander Technique in a day. It's easy. It's so simple. And that's what I do. So um, on to those three steps that I want to teach you right now. The first one, let me, I wrote them down. Where are they? I remember the first one, get curious. Yeah. The first step, you've got to have an open-minded attitude of curiosity. Okay? And you start, you need to start becoming a scientist, an observer of yourself. You need to start wondering what's going on with me right now. Okay? So, you can ask yourself right now. Now I want to help you start to experience this. Okay, so I want you to just stop for a moment and wonder, what do I notice about myself right now? So just take a moment and ask yourself, what do I notice about my body right now? Anything, anything, positive, negative, tense, free, whatever. Just wonder about yourself. Larry says, I like your first step. Get curious. Great. Thanks. It's a good one. We need to, if you want to have an open body so that your muscles can be free to move quickly, then you need to have an open mind. Okay. And the first step to an open mind is being curious. So everything's exper an experiment. You just wonder what's going to come out next. Musicians, the great musicians are spontaneous right? You listen to them and you're like, oh, what are they going to do next? Right? You can develop that really easily if you know what you're doing. Just start getting curious. And if you don't know what's going to happen, your audience sure isn't going to know what's going to happen. So stop planning and worrying so much about what you're going to do. You're unconscious. There's an inner wisdom inside of you that knows, like pure consciousness. <laughs> There's a wisdom inside of you that knows how to organize everything in you to accomplish exactly what you want to do. Okay, so we need to learn how to trust that inner wisdom. Get out of the way. That's what Alexander Technique teaches you. Teaches you how to get out of your own way and stop doing all the extra stuff that's really not helping, which includes a lot of muscular tension. So get curious. That's number one. Jill says, I notice I'm physically curled up. Doesn't feel open. Perfect. Celebrate that you notice that. That's step number one. You're on your way. Okay. Give Everybody give a thumbs up to Jill. <laughs> okay. And actually, everybody who's watching, I challenge you to stop. Ask yourself, what do I notice about myself right now? 
and put it in the comments. Let's see, what does everybody notice right now? I bet you a million dollars, everybody's going to say something different. <laughs> okay, so let's have those comments coming. There's a big delay for me, so I don't see your comments in real time. I hate that, but oh well. So just keep them coming. Okay, and then I'm gonna move on to step number two. Step number two is to learn your first Alexander Technique Etude, okay? Step number three, by the way, is to practice that Etude with consistency on a daily practice, uh, on a daily basis, okay? And that's what my practice tribe is for. You've gotta to come to my practice tribe because I'm going to help you develop a consistent daily practice and that you're gonna see the magic in your playing, I promise. It works for everybody. <laughs> everybody who does it, it's like foolproof. It's infallible, it's guaranteed. Money back, guaranteed. You're going to get benefit if you do this twice a day, every day, okay? Oh, the scrambled eggs I'm eating are unusually delicious. Who said that? Oh, it scrolled too fast. I don't know who said that, but it was really funny. <laughs> Good, so you're noticing your taste. You're noticing what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Okay, now let's make it even simpler. I want you to notice whether you are aware of tension in your body somewhere or ease. Those of you who've done the cycle with me and other Alexander Technique practices, you know how to find ease in your body. Not everybody is able to do that right away. So I just want to take a moment for new people to talk through this. There is always tension in the body and tension is not bad. It's not. We need tension or we'd be a puddle on the floor with nothing to support us. But we, what we want is appropriate tension. And so what we need to get good at is noticing the difference. Okay, so make a fist. Make it really, really tight right now. Go ahead, make a fist and then release it. Make a fist. Feel the tension and release it and notice the easing in your fist. You got that? Give me a thumbs up if you can tell the difference. This is... You know, living 101. <laughs> Toddlers can do this. So give me a thumbs up if you notice the difference between making fists and how that feels and releasing the fists and noticing the ease. And if you keep watching that ease, it doesn't stop when you let go of your fist. And that's, that's key. We'll talk more about that. So now that you can distinguish between tension and ease, I want you to come back and do the body scan again. Where in your body... Do you notice relative tension? Put it in the comments right now. I want everybody to notice somewhere in your body where you have some tension. And Dan says this is very beautiful. I'm glad, glad you think so. And I'm glad you're listening, everybody. Um, Desiree says I'm having trouble feeling my body. Feels a little numb right now. Okay, Desiree, you are feeling your body. You're feeling numbness. That's perfect, okay? so. No doubt monsters about that either, okay? Whatever comes up, comes up. That's the reality. This is all about noticing and acknowledging the truth of the moment in yourself and around you, okay? Jill notices her shoulder, great. Yola, shoulders. Nan, in my neck, headache, sorry. Linda, left shoulder. Okay, knee, it's the back of my neck right now. Okay, so everybody, probably has somewhere in the body that's, oh, Jenny has busy feet, <laughs> working hard. Everyone has somewhere in the body where it's just maybe a little, a little bit more tense or uncomfortable or a little painful, a little tension. Sabra says tension in my upper arms. I hope I'm saying that right. Sabra, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's probably Sabra. Okay, so... All right, now let's forget about tension because the more you focus on tension, the more you're going to feel it and nobody likes that, I hope. <laughs> so now that you know what tension feels like, I want you to consciously redirect your attention and start wondering about ease, okay? So now everybody give a, a comment. Um, let us know after you do body scan. Where in your body do you notice a little bit less tension or more comfort or a little bit of easing, a little releasing? 
Some people have a hard time with this at first. So if you're not finding a place of relative ease right away, don't worry, that's normal in the beginning. When, and it's also normal if you're really stressed out and overwhelmed and anxious and shaky. And that's when you might want to start with a go-to place like tip of your nose or fingernails or eyebrows or earlobes or, yeah. So those are places where you can't have any tension. So, <laughs> but those are like emergency places or beginner places if you've never done this before. Okay. For everyone else, if you don't know, okay, I'm seeing lots of people noticing ease. That's wonderful. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you something called the cycle. Now that you know how to find tension, relative tension and relative ease, and that's an important distinction. You're not looking for perfect ease. There is no such thing, okay? Trisha says, after I let my shoulders go, my neck feels much more at ease. Yes, everything's related. Everything in your body is connected. It's not possible to have easing in one place and not in another. It may feel like it, but as soon as you notice ease, your whole self shifts. It's either, you're either getting worse and getting more tense or you're getting easier and more open. And very often we don't notice, we don't feel the change, but I promise you every single time you wonder about ease, you are getting yourself back on track and you're going in the direction of feeling more ease. So that's why you've got to practice this and that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna teach you the cycle and again, if you have any questions at any time, please tribe. So join the practice tribe, the links at the top of this video, please join. And I have a free gift for you there too. So add it incentive. All right. So the cycle is an Alexander technique etude. A prime, he, he, this is by Mio Morales, my dear friend and, um, uh, an Alexander teacher in Oregon who's been teaching for 40 some years. Um, he's always experimenting and coming up with and for a second. It looks like I'm back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so anyway, the cycle is an Alexander Technique etude developed by Mio Morales and it takes less than two minutes. Okay, so here's how it goes. I'm going to demonstrate on one finger. We're going to do 10 fingers, two hands together. And what we're doing on each finger is I'm going, we're going to hold each finger like this, very softly, very gently, just like you're touching a, a baby or a, a butterfly, even better. Um, so you're holding your finger and I'm going to count to four on each finger. After each number, you're going to notice, a you're going to wonder actually, you're going to wonder and ask yourself, where do I notice a little bit of relative ease in my body? Okay. If nothing shows up, that's fine. You just go on to the next number with me. Don't worry about it. it. This gets easier as you practice over the days. It actually gets easier fairly quickly, usually in a couple days. So you can also kind of bring your attention to wondering about this general huge head neck area if nothing shows up right away. I'm afraid I'm having internet connectivity issues. If by any chance I lose connection completely, I will try to start another live immediately after. But if that doesn't work, then I will finish up in my group later today. Just so you know, <coughs> it's happened several times now. This has never happened before. But just a heads up that I will do more to finish up in my group later if this dies. I hope it doesn't. It seems to be coming back. So. Okay, so I'm going to do one finger so you can see how it goes. One, neck. Two, back. Three, neck. Four, Now, I might have just said neck four times, and that would have been fine. You can say neck 40 times, and that's fine. Um, and yeah, it really, really doesn't matter so much what comes up. What I don't want you to do is to go down into your body to try to find something because you feel like you have to find something. That's no good. We want to be just open to whatever shows up to come up. It's like you're asking your body to give you an answer to your question, but our job is to stay up here and wait for the answer to come up. So it's like, I'm the queen and I'm letting my queendom deliver my request up to my throne here. 
I like that image. <laughs> You're all queens of your queendoms and kings of your kingdoms. This is the throne room up here, so stay here. You don't have to run down into the fields to get the information. You, you put in the request and you allow your minions to bring you the, the answers, okay? If they don't come right away, have patience. They will come. Okay, maybe not today, but they will. Just keep it up. Keep practicing, okay? All right, so hopefully this is clear. If you want more of an introduction to the cycle, go to YouTube and Google my name and the cycle, and I have a complete 10-minute video teaching you how to do the cycle. So go there and you can watch that. I do the cycle um, live three times a week in my practice tribe. Another reason to come join me there. Um, and every Monday I post the times for the week. So when I'm done here today, I'm going to post the three times for the week. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just do the cycle. Um, if you have questions, just post them and I'll see them later. Okay, so you're going to take your thumb very lightly, very gently. Rest your hands softly in your lap. You can name places of easing in your body out loud or silently, whatever you prefer. People tend to have a preference. I'm going to say them out loud, what I notice, for a couple of fingers and then I'm going to stay silent. And I want you to think of this whole practice with a very light touch. So you're not trying to concentrate hard, you're just wondering, open-minded, curious, like a, a little kid, like, I wonder what's going to show up. And maybe nothing will show up. It doesn't matter. The magic is in the wondering, I promise. Okay. So, thumb. One. Neck. Two. Breath. Three. Feet. Four. Index finger. One, neck, two, breath, three, hands, four, neck, middle finger, one, two, One, two, three, four, middle finger. One, <clears throat> two, three, four. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. Thumb on the other hand. One. Two, three, four, index finger, one, two, keep your eyes open, three, four, good, middle finger, one, two, Three, four, smiling because the sun is coming out even stronger. Ring finger, one, two, three, four, and ring finger, one, two, Three, four. Good. So let's see a thumbs up across the screen. If you noticed a change in yourself, comparing how you felt before doing the cycle and how you feel now after the cycle. If you notice a difference, give us a thumbs up. Okay. Any kind of difference. Great. Jill, Desiree, okay. Larry, 
Um, I don't recognize the others coming, but yes, so you're noticing a difference. Eleni, heart. Yay, heart back to you. Yes, good. I think you're, you're all getting a benefit, noticing a difference. So how about you write in the comments just a few words on how is it different? What do you notice? What's different? What do you feel? Okay. Again, there's a lag, so I won't see those comments right away, and I'm going to keep talking, but I want you to give those comments. Tell us what happened. What do you notice now compared to before doing the cycle? Um, I'm going to play this passage again that I played at the beginning of the video just because I'm curious to see what happens now. Maybe you are too. <laughs> I don't care about if you're curious or not. I'm curious. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to do the same passage. And so I'm doing practice. Step number one, getting curious about what's going to happen. Step number two is to do my Alexander Technique, Ain't You at the Cycle. Step number three is to develop a consistent practice, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment after I play this. judge it or anything. I'm just going to move on. I know it was different. That's all I care about. Okay. Um, if you have any comments about that snippet of what I just played, I would love to get your comments on how you perceived the difference. I'm just not going to think about it myself right now, but I want to see your comments if you feel like sharing. Uh, okay. Step number three. This is short and quick, and then I'm going to finish. Step number three is very important. Step number three is what you practice, you get better at. So you've got to do your homework. You need to practice your Alexander Technique etudes. <laughs> you need to practice the cycle, okay? It works. It's less than two minutes. It's very powerful. It has transformed, is transforming my own violin playing on a daily basis. Even when I don't practice with the violin, doing the cycle is improving my violin prep playing. And I have proof because I'll go for a week without even touching my violin and I come back and it's better. Oh, that's something I was going to say before and I got sidetracked. <laughs> what I was going to say a long time before in this video was that in, those, in that long period where I wasn't really expressing much. Um, I was starting to learn the Alexander technique and I was not practicing the violin. Literally. I really literally went months without touching my instrument, but I was at a high level already so I could maintain my level, uh, my skill level. And the magic was not only that, but that by practicing the Alexander technique, my use of like my coordination got better so that every single time I got the violin out months later I had actually improved and I kid you not this is absolutely serious and it it shocked me every single time years later I could play things like uh, parts of Paganini Caprices that I, ha I remembered, I struggled with so much as a teenager. I could play them, but I knew there was always something missing in my technique and I just couldn't, couldn't get past what I knew. People couldn't tell because it was good, but I could tell it just was not as easy as it, I thought it should be. Years later, from practicing Alexander Technique, all of a sudden I could play those hard passages with ease and I hadn't practiced them or the violin in years. <laughs> so it just like throws all the common, yeah, the mainstream ideas about practicing and how we learn, it turns everything upside down on its head. Um, but the one thing it does not turn on upside down is the need for daily consistent practice. 
However, you don't have to worry. If you don't have time to practice your musical instrument, it truly does not matter. What matters is that you're paying attention to practicing your primary instrument, which is yourself. And you can do that in five minutes a day, I swear. You can do the cycle in the morning and then in, again later in the day. That's two cycles a day. It takes you about four minutes maximum. And you can do that and you're improving your musical practicing. This sounds crazy to most people. And I don't blame you if you don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Don't. Don't take me on, don't take any, anybody's word for anything. Don't take anything on blind faith. Try it out for yourself. Go deep inside. Try it out. I challenge you. Actually, come join our December practice challenge in my practice group. Do it. It's very easy. You're just posting a goal for the day and you are committing to doing the cycle twice a day. And then if you feel like it, you can post a little snippet of your musical practice video to share in, in the group. We're very kind and loving and supportive and that's part of the challenge is to give other people positive, encouraging comments and support. So there's no better place to practice and improve your skills with your instrument, but above all to, I dare I say, improve your life. <laughs> I, it, I, yeah, it has changed my life so much. I can't convey to you how powerful this practice is, but I think many of you here have been following this work and I know Larry's an Alexander Technique teacher who's here, so he knows from firsthand experience. Jenny Quick is an Alexander teacher and many of you here have been doing the cycle, so you know how powerful it is from personal experience. So don't take my word for it. Join my group, the link is at the top. Come get your free checklist and guide to, the, it's the seven keys to make your music sing. It's a nice um, checklist to keep in mind about your musical life and how to do it. So you've got your three steps. Get curious, do the cycle, and have a consistent practice, okay? Um, I think that's about it for today. Let me make sure there's nothing else I wanted to share with you. Um, no, I think that's it for today. Send me your questions and come to my group and I will see you soon. All the best and happy practicing. Bye-bye.